Okay, so next up in the Further Maths chapter summaries, we are having a look at chapter 2a. I've split it into two parts, and the first part is to do with method of differences of the series chapter. Now, I always say this, but it's not possible for these chapter summaries to cover all of the possible ways that examiners can assess the topic. So please make sure that you are looking at lots of different exam questions and getting yourselves really prepared for your upcoming exams. So we're going to have a look at these kinds of questions. Don't worry if you're not familiar with this notation. It's basically saying that there's just one gap between them when you do the substitution part. And it says here we're going to use method of differences on this sigma notation to come up with this formula. And we can tell that it's a method of differences question because it usually says in the exam question that that's the technique that they are looking for. If it's the series from year one, they normally say standard summation formulae. So just a quick reminder of how we do these. You use partial fractions typically to get it into a form where you have a function and the same function, but there's just a slight difference in the input for them, which is going to give you a nice cancelling process. You then so show some substitution of some different values to spot what that cancelling pattern is, and then you simplify. And typically there might be a part B to this kind of question where you need to actually do some kind of substitution or some kind of problem solving. Um, but it's very similar to the series stuff from Core Pure Year One. So in the interest of keeping these videos nice and focused, I thought we would just do the method of differences part here. So to get this in a form where we can apply the method of differences, I'm going to need to do partial fractions on this 5 over r plus 1 and r plus 2 that we've got here. And we know that standard form that we would have would be an a over r plus 1 and a b over r plus 2, which means that we have the a with the r plus 2 and the b with the r plus 1. Plenty of ways of doing this, but this is a further maths video, so I'm just going to go pretty quick for this stuff. So if r is minus 2, we get that 5 is equal to, that bit cancels, minus 2 plus 1 is minus 1, so it's minus b, meaning that b is equal to minus 5. And if r is equal to minus 1, we get that 5 is equal to minus 1 plus 2, which is just 1a, so a is equal to 5. Which now means that we've actually got the kind of next part of what we're going to do for the uh, method of differences. Because instead of writing that thing that we've got at the top, we can change it so that it is with our partial fractions version. So that it is going to be our 5 over r plus 1 minus 5 over r plus 2 that we've got here. Now, it's not exactly in this kind of form we've got here. It's actually the other way round, because this one is usually bigger than the second one. This one is bigger than this one, but it's still going to give you that same cancelling kind of pattern that we've got here. The key difference is there's just a difference in one between these things. And it's called a method of differences, meaning that there is a difference. There is something that is being subtracted with them like this. OK, let's just quickly box off that part to show it's not to do with the, this next bit of the question. So we've written in partial fractions form. We're now just going to do some of the value substitution. So I'm going to substitute in r equals 1. That will give me, oh, I'm not going to substitute in r equals 1. Did you notice something? I didn't even notice this. But r is equal to 2. Bit sneaky here. We're going to be starting with the first value, which is not r equals 1. It will therefore be starting with r equals 2. So when we sub in r equals 2, we will have our 5 over 2 plus 1 minus 5 over 2 plus 2. And then on the next line, when we substitute in r equals 3, that will be a 5 over 4 and a minus 5 over 5. No point in even simplifying these things. You can probably spot what the pattern is going to be already. But I am just going to do one more with r equals 4. So this would be a 5 over 5 minus a 5 over 6, substituting into this thing that we've got here. And I like to just do a dot, dot, dot to show I'm now going to do just the last couple of ones that we've got here. I'll typically just do r equals n minus 1 and r equals n for those final ones that we've got there. I probably do have enough space to do the simplifying good. I was just checking that I do. So when I do the r equals n minus 1, there would be subbing n minus 1 into here. It would just be a 5 over n minus 5 over n plus 1. And obviously for the last part, we just have a 5 over n plus 1 minus a 5 over n plus 2. And you can see the pattern of what's going to be happening with this cancellation. This will cancel with this. This will cancel with this. We have this kind of diagonal ca um, cancelling pattern that we've got. So we get these cancel, these cancel, those and these, leaving us just with 5 thirds minus 5 over n minus uh, 5 over n plus 2. So this is 5 thirds minus 5 over n plus 2. All that's left to do is just kind of create a common denominator. So we will have the 5 and the n plus 2 minus the 5 times the 3, which is the 15. And we have the 3 and the n plus 2. 
And you can see what's going to happen in the numerator. We would have a 5n plus 10. So there's going to be a 5n plus 10 minus the 15 over 3n plus 2. I will need a little bit of extra space over here so that we have 5n minus 5 over 3n plus 2. So that is 5 lots of n minus 1 over 3n plus 2, which is the thing that we were looking for in the question. Okay, the next kind of question is where instead of there being a gap of just one here, which kind of creates this cancelling pattern, r plus one and r plus two, a gap of one, there might be some questions where there is a gap of two like this. So exactly the same instructions over here, apart from instead of saying just partial fractions, I've said, or you may use another technique to get it into this kind of form. Obviously, there has to be a difference between them. And you still do the substitution of values to try and spot that cancelling pattern that we have here. Now, you can tell what this other um, technique is going to be to kind of split this thing up. We have an ln with two things as a fraction like this. We know that that can be rewritten as a subtraction. So this is going from r equals 0 to n. Again, I've got a different start value for this. This is the same thing as the ln of r plus 3 minus the ln of r plus 1, okay? So now I've got to that stage of separating this logarithm into two separate parts. I can actually just go straight in with the substitution, beginning with my r equals 0. So when I do it with r equals 0, I just get ln 3 minus ln 1. When I do r equals 1, I'll do r equals 2 and r equals 3, and then we'll see if, we, if we've spotted the pattern then. So we would then have an ln 4 minus ln 2, for r equals 2, there would be an ln 5 and an ln 3. And for r equals 3, there would be an ln 6 and an ln 4. You probably don't need to do that many that I've just done there, um, but just in case you wanted to. Oh, don't know why I put plus. And then we'll have our dot, dot, dot. I'll just go with my last two. So I'll do an r equals n minus 1 and an r equals n. For an r equals n minus 1, that would be an ln of n minus 1 plus 3. That's going to be an ln of n plus 2. And then this is just going to be an ln of n. And then for r of um, being n, you will have an ln of n plus 3 and an ln of n plus 1. So the ones you can see cancelling, we have this ln 3 cancelling here, the 4 cancelling here, meaning eventually that ln n would cancel out. And so would that last one as well, leaving us with, this time, one, two, three, four different things like this. So if I was going to write that out as a kind of a list of what we get left with, we have an ln of n plus 2, an ln of n plus 3. We have a minus ln 1 and a minus ln 2, but we know that ln 1 is equal to 0. So I can just combine these together using my logarithm laws. That's ln of n plus 2 and n plus 3 minus ln 2. And we know that when you do a minus ln 2, that's like a division that we've got here. So we have the ln of n plus 2, n plus 3, all divided by, ooh, by 2 for this part, which was the thing that we were wanting to show in the question. So in terms of these chapter summaries, I think this is probably going to be one of the shortest ones we've got for further maths. It's only the first half of chapter two. In the second half, we'll be looking at Maclaurin series. So I hope you found this useful for your revision, and I will see you in another video sometime soon.